It's to not do. too late. They're gonna rock you. They're gonna throw rocks on so the So what ground. am I supposed to do? So we're in a little bit of a bind. Flight is tomorrow night, and we're not entirely sure if we're going to be able to leave. It is what it is. <laughs> but we have to get to Italy tomorrow night because we have very important plans. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this bombing is a chance. I guess there's always a chance in Israel, but we don't know. I don't know if I'm saying anything until our wheels are on the tarmac in Milan. I'm just gonna read my book and think positive thoughts. We're not we're going the other direction of the airport. I saw the plane that we are in the complete other direction. Oh, we did. This is what I'm fucking saying, Jack. You can't jinx shit. <laughs> Chloe and Jack actually have like no idea what's happening. You guys are about to meet Avery, Colin. We're going to the villa. Come on for the ride. I have the essentials. I have one bathing suit, one t-shirt, one pair of underwear. Are you wearing that underwear? One pair of shoes, yeah. Oh god. Under my, ba under my bathing suit, don't ask. Because I don't have luggage, it's gone. We lost the speaker, we lost all my pants, all my sweatshirts, all my clothes. Honestly, probably like several thousand dollars worth For of stuff. Sure. I'm actually happy. Less stuff to think about. I don't have to do that. Less worry. <laughs> it is what it is. Episode six. Bongiorno, bongiorno. Bongiorno. Oh my oh, goodness. <laughs> we even got our uh, our cigar box, ashtray for our <laughs> cigars, cigars that we both already. don't have. <laughs> both of us lost our luggage last night. Jack, you want to do a little tour? Yeah, let's do it. Villa, it's no called no. Villa Cassia. This is our chef. Good morning. Bongiorno. You got the kitchen over there, dining. There's so many little like nooks. I was gonna do some journaling and meditation and such right here. <laughs> we have a little mini gym. No line at the dip rack. Definitely not. Never a line at the dip rack. Our wellness spa. That's a cold plunge? Yeah, it's a cold plunge. It's a sauna, full on. Wow, Lake Como is special. Bedrooms downstairs, Jack's and Isabella's is upstairs. Let's see some drone footage. <laughs> yeah. Let's fly way up to the clouds. Tell Teresa or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every restaurant. I Dude, we need to go there. You've been talking about we, this hotel. We have to, bro. We this guy to. loves hotels. I love hotels. There's this one called the Grand Hotel Turismo. It's like one of the best hotels in the world. Yeah, five star, uh, luxury. They're like three grand a night. Two pools. Okay, all right. First thing you're gonna do walking lunges. Oh, the walking lunges. Lose here in spirit. Damn, these are fucking rocks. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and deep into a squat. Down slow. And then wide. Okay. Four, three, two, one. Up. <laughs>
So this is how you fit nine gal in a sprint net. <laughs> sprint, sprint net. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the Outer Banks. I do kind of feel like I'm in Outer Banks right now. Bring it on home, John B. <laughs> Just our, our chef turns into our driver and then he has to like take the girls hostage and steal all our watches <laughs> from our house. And, <laughs> and then we have to go find him. That's why I didn't take the money. He's about to take yeah. my Rolex. Yeah, he has the keys as well. <laughs> Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Yeah. Thank you. He speaks Italian. Parlo italiano, sì. No, sta, sta, sta cercando di dire che sono so, so italiano, bisogna lavoro. Solo per lavoro. No, bisogna lavoro nel senso che li serve, cioè deve, deve, deve imparare. Di dove siete? Eh, dappertutto, loro americani, svedese, italiano. <ride> e... Tu sei, tu sei italiano. Sì, però tra cucina. Prego. Prego. Allora. How do I say we're getting lunch? Uh, andiamo a pranzare. Andiamo a pranzare. Andiamo a pranzare. Andiamo, that's another one. Andiamo, yeah, that's, that's another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's go. Vaffanculo. 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 What's that? Vaffanculo. It, me it means like, oh, fuck you. Oh, okay. and a lot of other things. Like, it literally means like, go to ass. Va but it like... Go to ass. That's, <laughs> that's, that, that's, 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 that'd be so fun, ripping a Porsche. Yeah. So, Colin ruined the surprise. Hey, everyone. I, I was gonna get it all set up and everything, like literally not even until we got to Croatia, I was gonna just hand Jack a ticket and be like, are Dude, you I ready? Like, flip my shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still flipping my shit. This is gonna be so cool. Steve Aoki, yeah. Alesso, Nora uh, Empure, Maxwell. Martin Garrix. Maxwell, Martin Garrix. It's, wow. it's everyone. Don't it's gonna be it. insane. What are you talking about? Shut up, we're not going to No ultra for you. Okay, I'll stay home. I'm the best son of you ever. Oh my god, the girl's so hot. Uh, <laughs> coming in? <laughs> Why? Girls never want to get their hair. It's perfect. No, you uh, do not inhale through the nose at all. It's only mouth breathing. His first blow was massive. <laughs> <laughs> time to eat, boys. It's time to wine and dine. It's time to eat. Tell says I have to go wear jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We have a uh, fresh pasta with pesto genovese and guanciale. This part of pork. Wow. Enjoy. Let's go. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Thank you. Dude, the sun is so small. Like, I'll stop now. I get too into it. <laughs> that was <laughs> so entertaining. I want to understand. I'm curious about you. Like, Talk really about the emergency, it, All right. emergency like, landings. Like, more than anything. The emergency landings are. I have a book in my house called. I can't believe how much money we saved on our floors at Luna. I shopped around, so I know we got the best deal. Right now at Luna, get an incredible 70% off carpet, hardwood, and laminate flooring. And Luna has a low price guarantee on all flooring and the installation. Top notch. What's going on? Very professional. <laughs> and warranty for life. 877-241. You don't know it? You don't know the jingle? No. Oh, fuck. 
I'm putting old commercials from when we were kids in the videos. So you literally are putting your own commercials in your videos that yeah. you don't get paid on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have two steaks per day like he does. Yeah, but I make hers when I make it. Yeah. 20 minutes extra because he's charging the food on the sun. I charge my steak for sure. It's so... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> See how he's a young soul? I'm telling you. God, it's so colorful. <laughs> Bro, the water in the sky! You gotta see, you gotta fucking charge your steak, bro! Come on! Dude, I'm the, telling you, the when the steak, when the steak is in the fridge you. all day, and you take it out and you wanna cook it on the pan, you gotta fucking thaw that bitch out. <laughs> so I put it in the sun. Do you Which, charge hers too? Yeah. yeah. You feel the difference? They taste way better. You guys ever heard of the Sunsetter retractable on it? <laughs> I'm the sun sweating. used to make our outdoor deck and patio space so hot and uncomfortable, we couldn't use it. But then, we discovered the sunset of Oh yeah, dude, my dad got one. <laughs> <laughs> These are like the best thing ever. Your <laughs> parents are obsessed with me. Buongiorno. 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 Che bella giornata. Che bella giornata. Buongiorno. So Jack had a rough night last night, which is why uh, I'm taking a little filming duty right now. But um, our chef uh, made him some veal that was, I don't know, just didn't cooperate with his stomach and he spent the night on the toilet. <laughs> Felt like college again. But here we are once again, nine gallon of Sprinta. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Oh, there we go. Welcome to Lake Como. Dude, we're back in Italian time. It's like so, I feel like I'm in like Da Vinci's workshop. This is where Da Vinci. Oh, you know in this town is the, oh, wait, wait, dude, is there's the... literally a painting. This is so legit. All right, so we're on the Riva. It's actually called a Riva. <laughs> I think I've only stayed at a Best Western in my entire oh, life. Oh no, no, you're lying. That's a lie. No, that's not a lie. Jack. I don't think I've ever been to a hotel more than four stars. Is that okay? How you doing? All right, well, we are sadly leaving our Como Cassia. We're, we're coming back at some point. My boy is so convinced. And Sartain goes, that's really, really, really sad, man. <laughs> okay, vlog, we're talking about is the earth flat or not? Oh, man. And uh, uh, Colin, Colin is convinced the earth is flat. And his main arguments are when they're doing train tracks, architects are building train tracks, they do not account for the curvature of the earth. That's one. It doesn't really make sense if the earth is a globe and they're building long train tracks. They don't do it for bridges either. There's the North Star, and the North Star, you can see it from every point in the earth. It never moves. Everything rotates around. The, the other idea is like there's this globalist agenda that you've probably heard of being talked about, like the Matrix and all that. The globalists, aka like the Satanists, are trying to convince us that the Earth is a globe because it makes us feel more insignificant and it makes you not believe in God. But if you look at like the evidence and you open your eyes and you think with your own mind, it's hard to actually prove the curvature of the Earth. Um, and it actually is much more in favor, the evidence is much more in favor of flat Earth. However, I have a friend, uh, Michael Sartain, who was a fighter pilot, and he is on the other side of the spectrum, and he thinks you have to be crazy to think that the Earth is actually curved. So Colin, he sent those four points. Yep. The second question we asked was, why do architects of bridges and train tracks never account for curvature of, earth, of the Earth? He sent an article. From a flat Earth denier website. Human. <laughs> that you find on Google. Do human-made structures account for Earth's curvature? If the Earth 
is round, some of the largest human-made structures would have to take the Earth's curvature into account during design and, and con construction. In fact, it is an issue and it does happen. A well-known example is the Verrazzano Narrows Bridge in New York with a central span of 4,260 feet. It was the longest suspension bridge in the world when it was built in 1964. Although each tower is vertical and perpendicular to the water, they are 41.28 millimeters farther apart on the top than on the bottom. And this is due to the Earth's curvature. It's one bridge they pointed out? Yeah. Well, what about the one in China? The longest one in the world, that's over the ocean. They interviewed one of the engineers of that bridge and they never did any different calculations for any curvature of the Earth. They just picked a bridge that has different dimensions so that they can claim that it's a curvature. What is the source of the website? Is it a flat Earth society or flat Earth disprover or something like that? It's been made Center by New Google. Zealand. Space Center New Zealand. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Space Center. What are they like? NASA, space. Who created the space organization in NASA? The Freemasons. Right there, that website already is biased to space. You need a non-biased website. Okay. Um, That's completely biased. So is Anything that, space is global. Anything so you just deny this one example of this bridge because it's from a space website? 100%. Okay, so yeah. what if I find it on a different website? Yeah, I would love it. An even website that's non-biased. If you step outside and you take a tape measure, you take your iPhone and you measure from this point to this point, with the curvature of the Earth measurements that NASA gives us, for every mile there's like a seven inch curvature downward. So if you just do an experiment with your friends on a long train track, if you just take the exact measurements that NASA gave you, you take a good camera and you zoom all the way in, you can see your friend waving to you. We're just using the science that NASA gave us to disprove it. Because NASA makes up all the numbers. They just pull shit out of their ass. Just like the, how far is the sun? It's like 10 trillion seconds away or something. They just like make up these crazy numbers and then when you actually do the calculations of the numbers, they're so fucking far that like your brain can't comprehend it. So they want to just make people not be able to think about it. But I have a question, Colin. Think about all the independently intelligent people in, on the earth of the billions of people on the earth. Yeah. Do you believe there's billions of people on the earth? How do we know? <laughs> I don't know how many people are on the Earth. There's I mean, like a few thousand. Like, I don't think we know the exact number of how many people are on the Earth at all times. Like, that's probably where the discrepancy is. It's actually in like a epistemological argument where you don't really believe in like scientific evidence. If somebody reports something that happened in like some country somewhere, you don't really believe that that happened because you didn't see it with your own eyes. Okay, what's America's relationship with some crazy third world country that's so insignificant? Do you think they have the data coming in every single day and like all the globalist countries like in the uh, World Economic Forum and all the ones in the G7, you think they're perfectly tracking all the population data of every little miniature country that has no benefit to them? Probably not. But they have this magic tracker that just tracks, oh, we're at 8 billion people now. We're way too overpopulated. We need to bring it down. Yeah. Like, that's that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to tell you that there's so many fucking people that, like, it's it's a, it's a pandemic of people. Yeah. We need to bring that down. Like, yeah. that's what they're always trying to do with the overpopulation shit. I'm in that mindset as well. I just, I, there's something to be said about, like, do you believe in things that other people say, yes or no? And it seems like you just don't believe anything unless you see it with your eyes. In which case... Yeah, I, I'm, dude, I'm with everything in life, I'm very open and receptive to new data. Yeah. Like, for example, Bitcoin, I feel like I found that pretty early compared to yeah, most right, right, of my right. peers. Like, everything in my life, I'm very open and receptive to, and I'm very open, yeah, I'm just very open-minded. But you need evidence to see it works. Yeah, yeah. And, and my conviction is very strong on things that I know, yeah. in my mind, is real. Okay, I have a question then. How do you know Bitcoin is real? How do I know it's real? I mean, yeah. you just look at its qualities. We don't know who really created it. The NSA could have created it. The CIA could have created it. But I do know its qualities are real. With 21 million, I've ran a node. I know how blocks get verified. I've seen mining work in action. So, like, I've tested yeah, everything yeah. about it. Yeah. So, I know all of it. But... That doesn't mean that Satoshi wasn't CIA. He yeah. could easily well be. But I know that the qualities of Bitcoin, even if CIA did create it, the only thing that they could do is sell their million Bitcoin. Yeah, right. And that's it. Like, yeah, that would be detrimental, but that's the only downside. Like, you know, there, there is there is one person holding one million Bitcoin. Yeah. We don't know who that is. Too. Okay, so back to the flat earth. We'll go back to the second, go to the next reasoning. This was the one about the Lake Michigan Mirage. And the refraction in the 
this guy. If you pull out a camera and you zoom all the way into Michigan, or sorry, Chicago, and you see the buildings, when you do a refraction test, you can like look up on Google how to test refraction. The quality of the image that you see is going to be so distorted and blurry compared to what the real image would look like if there was no refraction. And so I've looked up YouTube of refraction and like how that works. Yeah. But um, yeah, the news is all over that shit because whenever someone does report this stuff, they have to back up away to disprove it. So they pull up refraction because that's the only thing that kind of bends light to let us see an image. The, the flight dynamics. Yeah. Apparently in flight manuals, the flight manuals tell pilots not to account for the curvature of the earth. They say act as if the earth is non-moving and stationary. Michael Sartain is a fighter pilot and he says, that that's something they tell pilots just as an estimation rule because it helps make the, the models of flying simpler. So when they fly from New York to Dubai, okay, on a globe, right? If the yeah. pilot, imagine this is the globe, right? Here's a curvature. You're in New York. You gotta fly down here to Dubai. Yeah. Pilots, since they're acting as Earth is a non-moving stationary plane, yeah. they continue to keep their nose level the yeah. entire plane ride. So if the Earth is curved, how are they not flying out of the planet yeah. Because they're not dipping their nose down ever. You ask any pilot, they never dip the nose down on the plane, and they always see the same stars and the same constellations from above. They're always looking at the North Star. If you can look up on YouTube like what planes are looking at, like with a GoPro in the pilot's captain, like room, the and they're always looking at the North Star all the time. Even if you're in the Southern Hemisphere? Correct. You can always see it. Okay, I don't know about that. I don't know. Uh, I'll ask them. not dip their nose down, ever. Okay, so then... And what about on runways? Okay, let's say the Earth's circumference moves at a thousand miles an hour at the equator. Yeah. That's a fact from NASA. Yeah. So as you go up and the Earth is more skinny around the top of the circumference, like up here in, let's say, um, Canada, it's going to be a lot faster because it's, it's above the equator. Yeah. So when pilots are uh, landing from north to south on a runway all the way up towards the top, wouldn't the runway be moving at some kind of speed that they would have to calculate when they're landing? Or or no, because you're, you're, you're dropping in from the atmosphere, the earth is moving at a thousand miles an hour minimum. What if it's at 3000 miles an hour in North Canada and they're landing from north to south? Wouldn't the runway be moving so they have to calculate how to land the plane a little bit so that they land up with the runway? It's always flat. They never, the runways never move, ever. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the runways don't move, dog. The Earth is stationary plane, not a planet. Chloe, do you like this? Do you like this one? Yes, but I don't love the like, I feel like two chains. <laughs> oh, this. This is crazy. Yeah, this is nice. I love this. Oh, dude, dude, the bands are just so sexy. I look good on you. to watch for uh, Ultra. Yeah. So pick your poison. <laughs> We're all going in deep. Where are we technically? Maybe? Milan. We gotta go to Croatia. You We've got Milan. Ultra. Where the fuck are we? <laughs> are we doing a different stop? No, we had to skip that because there was no time. Oh. Oh, so we're not doing the picture stop. Are you serious? So Chloe dressed up for nothing? Chloe? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't, we're not doing the picture stop. Are you still comfortable in the jeans? Yeah, this will not be comfortable in the plane. No. Maybe there's some way you can change. It's a smaller one. Yeah. I'm going on a jet. <laughs> I guess. She figured it out. She figured it out. <laughs> well, that was a hard one. It's about time. No, I guess the fellow once said, ain't that a kick in the so head? summer 2023, gang gang. It's over. 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 It's over